Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome in. We're back. Another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. I'm excited for this one. The title of today's show is How to Sell Anything with the Rainbow of Sales. I have no idea what that means. It sounds really, really cool, though. And I have a guest who I, I think, I hope, is going to explain what that means. Um, so we're both on a time crunch. We're going to get right to it, which is mm-hmm. awesome. So let me welcome mm-hmm. her in. Courtney, thank you for being on the show. Hi, thanks for having me. What if I was like, yeah, I have no idea what it is. Can't help you. Just <laughs> That would be amazing right. because then we would just have a conversation and see what happens. But uh, you must be in sales of some capacity, I assume. So yeah. tell me, what what is it that you do? Yeah, so my background is in sales copywriting. And so I my work is really catered towards service providers and online course creators who have online-based businesses. And these are the kind of folks who end up realizing they need some kind of page, whether it's on their website or it's, it's a landing page, that sells people on hiring them or enrolling in their program. And so my expertise is you know, I I like sales in general, but it's really in crafting the words that go on those pages. Mm. You know, my favorite part of sales copywriting is none of it, it. none of it at all. (laughs) You're in good company, I would say, because most people when they have, they have even the on their to-do list, right? Sales copy, it usually comes with like a puke emoji next to it, right? It's like, I'd rather do, my favorite thing I've been saying for 10 years, because I've been teaching this for a long time, is I'd rather stab myself in the eye with a rusty fork than write a sales (laughs) page. And the problem with that is, it's so relatable. I mean, it's like funny, but it's relatable. The problem with that is, is that if that's the energy we inject into our writing, that is what our target clients are like, even if it's not conscious, that's what's coming through because writing is such an inherently creative task. And so you have to, we have to move away from that. So my favorite thing is to make it easy and fun, as easy as possible and as fun as possible. You still have to do the work, but um, I think for most people, they're making it so much harder than it needs to be. Mm, I love that. I I love the approach, easy and fun. It's just an energy shift. If you approach things with that energy, it's going to go a lot better. So um, I'm excited to dive in, but I'm curious, you've been doing this for, for 10 years. Um, I think you said you've been in the industry for over 13 years at this point. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a long time. I'm a dinosaur in online business. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I don't, I mean, your words, not mine, but anyway, (laughs) but what I'm curious, what got you into, I guess, copywriting and, and sales in general? So of all things, my um, my bachelor's degree is in French, so completely seemingly unrelated. I Once I got my, my bachelor's degree, I actually moved to France for a couple of years, and I was teaching English in an elementary school part-time. And while I was there, I was like 22, 23. I was trying to figure out, what do I want to do with my life? I, what job do I want to get? And there's not many things that go along with a French degree other than living in France and trying to figure that out, right? So I stumbled on this world of online business. This is back in like 2011. And I saw people like Marie Forleo online, who is teaching like women how to start businesses online. And I was like, wait, hold the phone. I could like start an online business and never get a real job. So that's really where it started for me. And then it took me a, a year or two to really get anything off the ground that I would say resembles a business. But I did start offering like services and freelancing. And I just sort of tried, started throwing things at the wall and trying to figure out what worked. And the reason I got into sales copy is because I started out as a resume writer. My background was in writing and I used to work at the writing center in my um, college. And when I was, um, when I, when I created an ebook to teach people how to write their own resumes, nobody bought it. And I was, it was like $12. And I was so upset because I had like a, few hundred people in my audience at that point. It was a lot easier back in that day to grow your audience online and nobody bought it. And I was like, Oh my God, I'm a failure. I suck. Like I'll never be able to do this. And then, and you know, once I had my pity party, I decided to dive in to figure out what actually gets people to buy things online. So now 
like $12 I can handle. I've sold things in my own business up to $12,000, like no problem. So, but in all of those things, whether it's a $12 ebook or a $12,000 high ticket coaching program, the, the sales page is always following the same formula. And that's really where that like you said, that little tease hook thing that rainbow of sales really comes in because the rainbow of sales is all about how you position what you're selling so that the person who's reading it goes, Oh, that's me. I need that. I, I love that. And you make it sound so simple. <laughs> Try. <laughs> that's, that's so amazing about so. You. this is not easy. And I've, no. I've done it. I've hired people to do it. I've gotten good results and bad results. And I know I, I'm nowhere near you in terms of skill. That's not what I'm saying, but you make it sound very easy and it's not. So I'm curious, what is, what is the rainbow of selling? Yeah. First of all, and what is this pattern that we, we need to be aware of? Exactly. So the rainbow of sales is my version of what I think is a pretty, uh, fairly well known in the sales universe kind of metaphor. So I've, I've heard this said, I think sort of the old school one is something about you're an island and you need a boat to get to the other island. And it's basically like where you are right now, where you want to be, and then what's going to get you there. And those are really the three factors that you need. So for me, I grew up in the era of Lisa Frank journals in elementary school with all the like rainbows and glitter and unicorns. And I used to love drawing rainbows with a cloud on one end and a pot of gold on the other that's the rainbow of sales. Like I've literally like leveraged something I used to doodle as a child into my <laughs> best, most branded concept in my business. So the cloud represents where your target clients or customers are right now, psychologically, what is going on for them that is frustrating that they don't want. Some people call that the problem, the pain points, all that, those things people can get a little annoyed by, but essentially what is going on for them right now that they don't like, that they're frustrated with um, as it pertains to your offer. So that's that core problem. And then on the flip side is the pot of gold, which is what is their ultimate desired result? What is that transformation? What do they want to make happen? And we need to make those things um, specific. So we can't have a list of like 20 things. We, I mean, I start with that, but then we need to figure out what's the core one and as tangible as possible so that we're clear on who we're speaking to, what their core problem is, what their desired result is. And then the rainbow represents your offer, your business, whatever it is you're selling as the bridge between those two places. So once you're clear with somebody, whether this is in a sales conversation or on a sales page or anything else, you're essentially going to go, hey, is what's the problem you have? Or is this the problem that you have? And once that's clear, you go, okay, what's the result you want instead? What is like your ultimate, um, you know, where would you like to be with this in a month? six months, a year, whatever, whatever's relevant to your offer. And then you could say, okay, so here's the thing that I'm selling you. <laughs> I usually don't use those words, but I'm um, just to be vague. And here's how that can help you to get from where you are now to um, where you want to go. And those three factors, that's not all there is to selling, but it's like 80% of the heavy lifting. Really anything else after that is overcoming objections and answering questions. Mm. We talk about this all the time at what if is the 80 20 rule. What is that tiny little thing that's going to get you the majority of the way there. And in terms of running your business and, and your operations, just do that. Yes. So in terms of sales, how do you go about identifying that 20% that's going to get the biggest lift before you worry about the objections? Yeah. So in terms of the language and, re and like resonating with people, is that what you're asking? Yeah. Like when you're working with a yeah. client to write a sales yeah. page or design an offer, what, how do you go about that process? Yeah. So I'm always going to start with, I call them your muses. So most people call them like your ideal client avatars or something like that. I like muses a, cause I like to brand my own concepts and not use what everyone else is using. But I also like it because I want people to, instead of inventing a person, which is totally fine. And that works for a lot of people. And it's a very tried and true concept, but I always struggle with that one because I'm like, well, I could just invent anything I wanted. And I just still don't know if it exists. Like, I don't know if this person exists. So what I do is I, every time I'm creating an offer, I'm helping someone else with their offering and designing that or positioning it. I want them to tell me three people they actually know who are a perfect fit for this offer. And I want to dig in on each of those um, people's I'm like, what's the right word there? Rainbow of sales. So, so I'll ask whenever someone's stuck, this is what we do. Okay. Okay. Tell me one of your muses and they'll say, okay, one of my muses is Jessica and Jessica 
is a mom and she's overwhelmed, you know, whatever it is. Right. And so, okay, what is Jessica's problem? And I'll just listen to the client, just sort of like word vomit on that. Okay. What is it that Jessica wants? Who is Jessica jealous of? What is it that she's really trying to create that she hasn't been able to do herself? And then when we do that for three examples, three muses, that's when you can start to see the thread. What's the thing that all of them are wanting? And if there's not, maybe we're just, we're trying to help way too many people, right? Like that sometimes happens, but more often than not, 80% of the time, you know, I love that. I love that concept as well. 80% of the time it's going to go, oh, this is the way we need to talk about this. So it's like, it's a good rule of three concept because I feel like, one could be an outlier, two could be a coincidence, but once we've got three, now I can start to see a trend and I can see, okay, what is that real pain point that I can help to solve? Mm, that's that's really interesting. I, I hate the idea of an avatar because like too, said, honestly. They're, they're made up and you, it, it's your perception of what's out there, but it's not real. Yeah. yeah. I, I like the idea of using real people and people mm -hmm. you personally know. I think that's yeah, because otherwise, like you're gonna have to sell this to someone. So we need to start. If you don't know three people, you shouldn't be creating this offer yet. And then you go to go out and meet people because otherwise you're creating something for nobody. Mm. You know, we need as, as anyone has who said to sell something knows you gotta have people to sell to. <laughs> really? Is that true? <laughs> but it's amazing how many business owners start off and they just go, I wanna create this thing, I'm gonna create it, and then I'm gonna sell it. You gotta find your buyers first and then the create the thing for them. Mm, that's that's a gut punch for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, that's powerful. I love that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you know this, but we use one of our muses is named Jessica. Is that just the most common name ever? <laughs> it's so rare. Okay. Any of us are like millennials. That's probably like yeah. <laughs> it is one of the most, like, top names. Yeah. That's so funny. Maybe our I Jessica. Have, like, Ten clients named Jessica. So. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, okay, so we're moving through the rainbow of sales. We understand yeah. where they are, where they want to go, and our our service or product is the solution to get them there. What are the other elements? Obviously, we have to overcome objections, but what are the other key points of a sales page that we need to keep in mind when when we're going through this and designing this for our offers? Mm, okay, so there's a couple of trouble spots that are, I would say, you know, 99% of the time people are really struggling with that have a massive effect on the results, i.e. the sales, right? I think the biggest one is that people really struggle in how to communicate what's included in their offer in a way that isn't confusing and is also complete, right? So I see a lot of people um, really common is we'll have a page, they'll be like, okay, this is my coaching package. And there's like a bullet point list of like, you get three calls. And it's like, I'm glad you have that information there. Like, I'm not going to fault anyone for that. But, we're, but we aren't necessarily presenting it in a way that is utilizing the real estate of the page so that each of those items is standing out. And so the, the so that's the first thing is, um, is laying out your offer details in a way that makes sense to people. And I think what makes that hard is we know our offers so well because we made them. And so we suffer from the curse of knowledge. And so we share our offers with people and we don't realize that we're omitting really important information because we're like, oh, that's obvious. It's not obvious. So I like to think of it as you're, you want to present your offer in a hierarchical order, meaning, okay, what are the main components of your offer? Like if there are like two or three, like let's say, so I have a high ticket coaching program and my, my, my three main components are there's, there's a course, there's coaching and there's critiques. Okay. So then it's like, you're kind of just orienting them to like, okay, that's the main structure. Okay. Then within the course, there's all these things. Then within the coaching, this is how that works. And then with the critiques, this is what that is. So you, you need to kind of give people the information from big picture to small details in that kind of way. I think that's the biggest mistake people make. And that's a very, um, it's like a very logistical answer, but it's a very logistical problem. Right. And then the second thing that comes up is just, I call it, I love the word hierarchy, I guess, but it's important on sales pages because you've got this long page and you've all this stuff on it and you need to use visual um, cues so that people know what to look at or else they come, become overwhelmed really easily. And so I like people to follow what I call the hierarchy of text. And I want on every sales page, and this is very specific to sales pages, right? I want on every sales page, 
but also any other kind of content is to be a, you have a headlines like type of font or size you have a subheadline and you have body text a lot of people what happens is they have like their headlines are all different sizes and different areas and then they have too many different fonts and it's amazing how just literal and it's so basic but literally just going in and saying okay for every section on my page the headline is you know 25 point font for the subheadline, it's 18 point for the text it's 14 point like whatever that is that's going to make such a big difference because people need to be able to scan a sales page and they can't do that when their brains are getting overwhelmed by the information and especially those of us with neurodivergences like me I'm, i have adhd i'm such a scanner but even if you watch any um look at any heat map data on on sales pages, what happens is people will look at the page, they'll kind of read the first bit, the rainbow of sales more intently, so important, right? Then they kind of go down really fast and then they kind of come up and they start to go through it again. And then they might go up and go. So people are reading in a hierarchical way. They're reading the main information that stands out first, the headlines. Then they're reading some of the subtext. Then if they're kind of convinced, they'll go, okay, let me make sure I go read all the details. Then some people like me, we just never read all the details. I'm just like, I'm in, let's go, I'm buying it. But for the people who even say, oh, I read every word on a sales page, chances are, Actually, not even sure. I guarantee you, they are not sitting there reading word for word the first time. They're still doing like kind of an overview scan, this and that. So we need to make sure we're calling out with those headlines when we're laying out the page. That's a little bit more of a visual tip there. Yeah, that's a fantastic tip too. And along with those those headlines and the first rainbow, yeah. I think what what a lot of people get hung up on is the actual content of it. Now let, let's speak <laughs> about we'll speak about Jessica in particular. So yeah. Something I've noticed recently in, in experimenting with a couple of our offers is, and talking to other people too, is you have the ability to immediately grab the right or wrong buyer. So yeah. how do you know what language to use? Are you, we'll just use the, the regular vague language. Are you speaking to problem aware people, solution aware mm -hmm. people? Are you speaking into and motivating or inciting more pain? Like what is your <laughs> format? Or I love to incite pain, baby. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, um, like twist that nail in yeah, there. Well, in the eyeball, I, right? <laughs> uh, my past coach, her name's Mariah Cause. She's absolutely, um, just an absolute wizard on the internet, um, has a method that I love and I just have not thought of a, a better way of <laughs> explaining it than hers. So I wanna give her credit for this. She teaches people to always speak to your champagne clients. So her concept is that people will rise up, but you don't want to speak to the lowest common denominator, like possible client, like the least ready client, because then the people who are ready are going to feel like it's too, like too basic for them. So if I'm, if I'm trying to work with people on, um, on training their cats to do backflips, let's say, then I could be like, well, some people have kittens. They don't know. It's like, I want someone, my ideal person is someone who is like already kind of nerded out on this stuff. They're like, but like, there might be people who they just have a new cat and they're just someone on my page and they're interested, but I'm not going to speak to those people necessarily because then the people who are a little bit more into this stuff are going to feel like, oh, this is too basic for me. I'm beyond that. Whereas the people who are not quite there in terms of maybe check the boxes for your offer, whatever it is, who are like, I want to rise to that occasion. I want to be that they will show up with a different energy, but you don't want your like champagne clients as Mariah calls them to have to come down to meet you. So I think always speaking to your highest on your client, but I also think that there is an element of throwing in details on your page that even with, within that, you're going to have probably a range, right? So, so speak, throwing in language that speaks to each type of level in that range. So for example, I'll say like, maybe, um, you just, um, maybe you just started your business last year and you've only been doing this for a year. So I'm basically saying like, that's my lowest level person. Maybe you've been at this for a while. Maybe you've already made a million dollars, right? So I'm saying, okay, that's my range of people, but I don't want newbies. So I'm like, not going to speak to those people. Um, so I think just knowing what your range is and the real lesson here is just don't try to speak to everybody. Anytime you're trying to speak to everybody, you're speaking to nobody. And, and that's really what's going to um, keep you stuck. Yeah, that, that's a fantastic tip right there. Champagne clients speak to the specifics and attract the ideal client. If you take nothing else from this episode, I hope you take that away from it. I know we got to go. We got to wrap yeah. this one up. 
Um, yeah. <laughs> this has been fantastic. There's so many different directions we could have gone. I, I hate that we're out of time, but um, if someone wants to take the next step in working with you in, in revamping their sales pages, where do we go? You have a website, a download, mm -hmm. what do you got? Yeah, you can go to CourtneyShawl.com. That's how my name is pronounced, C-H-2-A-S-L. Um, but I also, I have free sales page templates. They're Google Docs that are the entire framework. I, like everything I just talked about, if you go to CourtneyShawl.com forward slash template, or templates, it's either template, singular, or plural, then you'll be able to download. It's two um, Google Docs. One is more for a service and one is more for a course sales page, but those are fantastic. Like I, I love offering those for free because they're like, they're like, should be paid, but I'm like, no, no, I want to give them for free so everyone goes and gets them, right? So it's like literally tells you, put this headline here, put this information here. It's like a template for the copy for your page. That's fantastic. I just looked it up because I'm, I'm, you know, for a friend, I'm going to send it to you. <laughs> yeah, for a friend. No, who's really struggling. I'm going to go do it. this <laughs> myself. Enough of this garbage. I need this help too. Um, it is CourtneyShaw.com slash template. No S. Template. So. Just one. And then yeah. I surprise you by giving you two, but I already ruined the surprise. So, <laughs> so look at that bad copywriting or ever incongruent <laughs> with her template templates. Um, Courtney, this was so much fun. Uh, I would love to have you back for a part two. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to yeah, download we'll work on your templates. Yeah. Revise my sales pages and see where it gets me. And I'll let you know on part two. But for those yeah. of you listening, watching, wherever you are, thank you for listening. First and foremost, love to have you here. Make sure you subscribe, comment, so we can continue doing this ridiculous show that we do here and bring on amazing guests like Courtney. Um, Courtney, thanks again for coming. We'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. See ya.